Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are entering the Plutonian system as we are going to be turning Pluto into a star as I know you guys want it. We've done the four outer planets now we're on to some of the dwarf worlds I think. So Pluto first up here. If you want to see more let me know in the comments if we should continue after Pluto. But yeah Pluto today we're going to make it into a star. Now I'm thinking we make it into more of an orange dwarf kind of star. I think that could be... um. Could be slightly interesting so they're just doing red dwarfs every time especially as we are further from the sun now i think this could probably have quite a cool effect if we uh proceed with this so should be uh should be quite interesting so i'm thinking yeah k-type star rather than an m-type red dwarf i think could be interesting so without further ado let's do this now unfortunately for its moons i mean Charon here it's not gonna have much of a chance to survive because pluto is gonna be getting a lot bigger than this and it will be engulfed very very quickly so uh, fair do, everybody. Let's start increasing the mass of a uh, little Pluto here and make it into a real contender in the solar system. So, should be interesting. So, let's go ahead and add material. So, tools, material. Oh, yes, here we go. Now, we'll start with adding a uh, hydrogen. Now, let's spray a load of it on the old Pluto. So, there you go. Pluto's going to get a lot bigger now. We need a lot more mass than that. Let's just start throwing Earth masses into it. One Earth mass. There you go, Pluto. Big up. Straight into a gas world, of course. That is a lot of mass. It's increasing here. Poor old Charon. It's not going to be surviving long, I have to say. Orbits. I, yeah, there it is. I don't think that's going to last much longer. Pluto's pool is going to get huge from this. So, should be interesting. Okay. Right, let's continue. Yep, tools. Uh, yep, material. Oh, God, I'm completely blind there. Right, there you go. So, let's continue. And it's expanding up. Uh, hydrogen, massive Earth. Let's go to one massive Earth. There you go. So, now we're really going to be packing it in. There you go. Straight away. Huge. And there it is. It's going to engulf all of its moons. They are gone already. Ten radius of Earth. Its moons are no match for it. So, Pluto becoming a truly nasty planet now. There we go. Customization-wise, I'm thinking, well... It's pretty far away. Technically, it probably starts as more of a nicey looking planet. So, a nice giant-y looking one. But there's a deep blue colour for now. There you go. Deep blue. But let's continue. So, there you go. We're spraying in that material. Pluto gaining mass every little bit here. In near hours as well. Very, very cool. So, I want to roughly build this star to around 0 0.4 suns. That's roughly, I think, where a K-type star boundary is. So, it should be interesting. Okay. Very, very good. Now let's ramp it up. Jupiter mass. It's time to set up a bit. There you go. 0 0.2 Jupiters of mass. Pluto is really expanding now. So it's shrinking down. There you go. Now we're starting to become into the star level. There you go. Brown dwarf. And now we're a star. Continuing up. 0 0.1 suns. That may have overkilled it a bit. <laughs> How many Jupiter masses are we looking at here? 108. Okay. So 0 0.48 to 0 0.8 times the sun's mass. So, okay. So if we go to there, so 0 0.1, so we get a bit more. But I think that's more of an orange dwarf status at the moment. I think that looks pretty good. Because, you know, it's a lot bigger, more and more powerful than your normal world red dwarf. So, right, there we go. So let's uh, continue. Make it a little bigger. So I want it to be roughly be in that 0 0.45 range, which is roughly where you'd have a K-type. So let's uh, continue. Pluto becoming a true, uh, true world of trouble here. So there you go, so 0 0.3, still throwing in a bit, bit more Jupiters. There you go. So 0 0.4, now you are in K-type territory. So the luminosity, I don't know if it's going to increase on its own or we're going to have to do it manually. Uh, let's find out. So there we go. Is it going to update itself? I don't know if he is. I think we need a bit more temperature. There's a little bit of flown hydrogen. Now let's get rid of that. So Pluto, now a truly dangerous world. Now as you can see, the outer solar system already receiving trouble from the nearby objects. So, oh yeah. So I think we need to be around at least 40 to maybe 50% of the sun's luminosity here. So I'm going to double this. So I'm thinking somewhere probably around this. 0 0.6, I think that's probably a decent K-type kind of uh, stuff there. Um, so temperature, that definitely needs to be hotter. Um, around 3, 000, around 4,300 Kelvin, I think, and luminosity. Get that back to where it was. So around 0 0.7, 0 0.6. There you go. So Pluto, a true baron in the outer solar system now. I definitely think we're going to be, uh, I think Neptune could be an endangered world here. Pluto, looking good. New orange dwarf. So there you go. Speed up time. Now, how long will it orbit the sun for? Because 
0 0.4, so it's almost half the size of the sun, mass-wise, so it could be a truly troublesome world now. The Kuiper Belt is going to fall apart very fast. This is going to clear out the orbits. Neptune's orbit's already been affected, as you can see. Pluto's orbit singing around there. Oh, yeah. They're going to cross. There you go. So speed up time. Watch as the chaos unfolds. Pluto's orbit already swinging into the Uranus region there. Oh, dear. We've got Kuiper objects being slung in the inner solar system. The outer solar system is falling apart very, very fast. Neptune has not even gone near Pluto yet. Is already having orbital problems from the secondary star. Uranus slung into the inner solar system. We saw that in the previous video where we had Neptune as a star. Uranus has been affected drastically by that. Saturn, not looking good for that either. I've seen some changes of Saturn. That's also going to pull off Jupiter's orbit as well, so there's going to be chaos there. Oh dear. Uranus crossing by Saturn there. Huge, huge carnage here. And this is not going to last very long. The solar system is going to fall apart very, very quickly. Stuff is getting ejected real fast here. There you go. So speed up time a bit. Pluto picking up its own uh, objects now. Saturn has become a planet of Pluto. What is this? There it is. What's going on here? There you go. Saturn. So press play. Oh, look at that orbit around Pluto. Oh dear. That is not a good look for Saturn. So there it is. Slinging by Pluto. Close encounter. There you go. So how far away actually is it from Pluto? It's about 3 AU away. There you go. Receiving a good amount of light from Pluto as well. Uh, very good. So Saturn being picked up by old Pluto there. Okay, there you go. Let's continue. I don't think Saturn's going to last forever around there, I have to say. Let's continue. What's going on over here? Get rid of all the ejected stuff because they have had it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I think all of these guys, let's be honest, they're not coming back. So let's just save simulation speed by getting rid of those. Orbits, there you go. I think Iris has had it as well. Yeah, the Sedna. It's not looking good, is it? Oh, Pluto, what have you done? So there you go, Jupiter. Hang on in there. In the solar system, like we've seen in the previous experiments, as long as uh, nothing closer than Saturn becomes a star, the inner solar system kind of functions as normal, as the sun's gravitational pull is still far superior to anything in the outer solar system. So unless we put an object over one mass of sun out there, we're not going to see too many problems with the inner solar system. So other, on the other side, Pluto giving us a secondary star. Saturn just permanently orbiting Pluto at the moment. Oh dear. Jupiter hanging on in there. Uranus and Neptune are long gone. I don't know what's happened to them. I don't think they're... Yeah, it's not a good, is it? I think they've had it. Orcus, let's get all these. They're not coming back. There you go. Some of the outer Kuiper stuff. What has happened here? I think Uranus and Neptune just, have just completely had it. Yeah, Uranus is going out. Neptune's going out. Let's go ahead and uh, view from Earth. See what's going on there. I think we, sh in theory, should be receiving a bit of light from that Pluto. Oh, easily, yeah. So Pluto is currently sitting 29, so still in this Neptune distance region, 130 year orbit. But you know, a star of that light is giving a bit of a bit of light to her. There you go. So if we land, say, let's land in China here. Have a look round. Have a little look up in the night sky. There you go, Pluto. Perfectly visible in the sky. There you go. That's where the goggles off as well. Very nice. Receiving light from two stars, the old Earth here. There you are. Goggles on, see a bit more from it. There you go. The Earth getting that secondary light source. Very, very cool. Not obviously going to receive much energy from a K type at that distance. And if you think about it, even if you put a, a G type sun like star, Earth wouldn't really receive much temperature at that distance from it anyway. So yeah, having a K type out there at half luminosity, that's not going to make much difference to it in Earth's perspective. There you go. Same for the other inner planets. They're not going to see anything extra. Venus getting a bit of extra light on the other side, though. Ooh. -hoo. So Venus would be a very, very bright object in the night sky, having extra light on it like that. Very cool. Okay. Saturn, minus 139. So even Saturn's not really receiving much in the terms of the temperature. It does fly by quite close, though, Saturn. But let's see. Its closest point is 0.3 AU. So Saturn's has a very, very close flyby moment when it does actually sling in past. Does it? I mean, it surely it should receive a bit of temperature from that. Surely, let's have a look. Can we get a bit? I mean, it doesn't it's not sitting there long enough to really warm up though? Look, there you go, straight out again. Okay. As for the sun, I mean, obviously completely knocked off its path having the extra object there. If we look at the sun's trail, the sun is constantly moving. You can see there is a dance with death here between the two stars pulling on each other as well. But you know, the sun. There's enough distance between the two stars that the Jupiter and everything closer can orbit as normal, but all the other stuff has been absolutely ruined. So Saturn's been picked up by um, Pluto. It looks like it may be there indefinitely at this point. Doesn't like the sun's going to have much pull on it anymore. I mean, Saturn, maybe it eventually break away. And its orbit is changing. It's not constantly sticking there. Everything further away is pretty much game over at this point. So we're going to go ahead and remove those from the simulation because they are out of it. Uranus, gone. 
We've lost Neptune as well. I don't even know where Neptune's ended up. Though. It's still hanging on there, actually. There it is. These stuff, they are, they are completely out of it. They're never returning. So that really gives us these remaining objects here. What's that? There you go. Neptune's still, Neptune's still maybe in the game a bit. I don't know. Uranus was definitely not. These things, though, yeah, they're, they're out of it. So this is this gives us our remaining uh, objects now. So all the outer stuff is pretty much just a waste of time. So Neptune's still hanging on in there. Look, Neptune, come back into play a bit. There you go. Two objects around Pluto, Saturn and Neptune. I don't think that's going to last forever because those objects are probably going to bounce off each other at some point. So probably going to lose Neptune. But Neptune orbits in Pluto are a pretty good region at the moment. So Saturn's orbit's changed now. Maybe a more stable orbit around Pluto now. Look at that. Neptune now being the one in danger. Interesting stuff. If Neptune gets ejected, Saturn may have found itself a new home. There you go. Look at that. Oh, there you go, Neptune. I think that's... Ooh, there you go. And ooh, Saturn's orbit's still being pulled by the sun, though. There you go. Yeah, the sun is still having a drastic effect on Saturn, so it's like Pluto can't hold on to it enough at that distance. Neptune's stinging around as well. Trying to survive as long as it can. There you go. There's that one gone as well. But yeah, Pluto. It's a K-type star. Definitely, uh, definitely causing some problems. Pluto's really taking its revenge on the solar system here for being demoted as a dwarf planet. So there you go. Now becoming a fully-fledged star, showing the planets who's boss. There you go. So, yeah, again, everything other than Jupiter, if anything further out than Jupiter from the sun, has had a drastic effect for old Saturn's been taken away from the sun forever. Now there's a huge gap from Jupiter onwards to the next object out. So there you go. But, yeah, to conclude, don't mess with Pluto. Obviously, it may come back to bite you. As it has done here so there you go but in all seriousness yeah same experiment as uh or the same sort of conclusion has come out is the outer solar system is trashed jupiter and everything close is okay as we've seen in the last two scenarios there you go but it's just different objects are being pulled on and slung around but even with a larger mass object like pluto jupiter still okay so maybe we have to uh tune up the next one we do and have it try and affect more of the solar system we'll see let me know what your suggestions are down below in the comments everybody with that all said and done Let's see if we can go for 50 likes on today's video as well, everybody. Subscribe if you're new. Help us on a journey to 50,000 subscribers as we are less than 700 people away now, everybody. On target to hit it by the end of the year, which is absolutely awesome. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your feedback down below in the comments, everyone. But with that all said and done, make sure you guys all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.